NBA Street, NBA Live, NBA Ballers, NBA Shootout, NBA Showtime, NBA Jam, NBA Jam Extreme, NBA Courtside, Kobe Bryant, NBA Courtside, NBA Inside Drive. There were so many games, some of them good, some of them bad, some of them so bad they were good, but they were there. We had options. There was a full spectrum, something for every NBA fan out there. Maybe you liked authentic simulations, so you bought NBA 2K. Maybe you liked arcadey over the top games, so you bought NBA Street or NBA Jam. Or maybe you were somewhere in the middle and wanted something that resembled an actual NBA game, but was still fun, which is the whole point of video games. So you bought NBA Live. Or maybe you were all three. Maybe you enjoyed the full spectrum of NBA games. Sometimes you wanted to have fun. Sometimes you wanted something realistic. And sometimes you want to do a triple backflip between the legs 360 honey dip from the three-point line. The point being, we used to have options, and now we no longer do. But that's not a good enough reason for me, for us. I, I need to know why this happened. We need to know why this happened. So I did some digging, some research, some Googles, in hopes of understanding what happened to all of these games. Was it something bad? Was it something malicious? Who can we blame for this tragedy? We'll explore that and more in this video. What's good, y'all? My name is Malik, and I would like to first and foremost thank y'all for clicking on this video. If you're new here, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're still building this channel up. Still trying to grow this community so it would mean a lot if you could bless us with a like and a subscribe and for those of y'all that have been here my amigos my brothers from other mothers and my sisters from other missus i just want to say thank you again for all of your continued support i hope you're having a blessed day and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already so we can continue to build the dopest community on youtube all right without further ado let's get to it so all right according to wikipedia which <laughs> <laughs> which is a wild way to start any sentence, but all right, we're just going to roll with it. According to Wikipedia, there have been a total of 188 basketball games published since 1973 when the first game ever, rightfully called basketball, was released on the Magnavox Odyssey. And that game was trash. We saw a total of six different basketball video games released that decade, and they all had the exact same name. For real, you had basketball, basketball again, TV basketball, Atari basketball, NBA basketball, and then basketball again. Again, but this time with an exclamation point. Then in the 80s, we started to see the growing popularity of both the sport and video games coincide. We got a total of 21 games released that decade with varying degrees of creativity in the names. There were still a ton of games just called basketball, though there were some more iconic names in games from that decade, including Double Dribble, Jordan vs. Bird, and Lakers vs. Celtics, the latter being the predecessor to the eventual NBA Live series. In the 90s, we again see the parallels between the growth in both the video games and the popularity of the sport. As popular as we think the NBA is now, it pales in comparison to how popular it was in the 90s at least in the US. In fact, seven of the 10 most watched games ever in the history of the sport took place in the 90s. So of course, this would also be the decade where we saw the most games developed with a total of 70 titles released over that 10 year span. This is also when we started to see some of the most iconic franchises appear, such as NBA Jam, NBA Live, and the first installment of NBA 2K, which was released in 1999. Again, this is a product of two golden generations crossing paths. The the 90s were the first time we saw games developed with more comprehensive modes, storylines, and graphics, a product of the significant advancements that were made in console technology at that time. And the 2000s continued to build on that foundation. We saw the introduction of a new generation of consoles right as the new millennia kicked in, with the release of the Xbox, Nintendo GameCube, and PlayStation 2, the latter being the highest selling console of all time. And while there were almost as many NBA games released in the 2000s as there were in the 90s, the variant and the number of publishers dwindled significantly. This was a decade of consistency where sports games were being launched every single year, whereas the previous decade was one of inconsistency, littered with one-off games from a bunch of different developers. In fact, there wasn't a single NBA game released in the 2000s that wasn't part of a series. But even in that, in the early 2000s, there was still a significant amount of variety. Looking at just pure NBA simulations, you had NBA Shootout, NBA Two Night, NBA Courtside, NBA Inside Drive, and of course, NBA Live and NBA 2K. That's six different simulations at the turn of the millennium. Now, not all of these games are the same when comparing quality. The names you recognize are the names you recognize for a reason, because those games were in fact better than the rest, and as a result, continued to get support from customers. This is actually somewhat quantifiable. If you go through the top 50 games of all time on Metacritic, you'll see how there are only two companies on that list, EA and 2K. In fact, even if you skim through the top 100 games, it doesn't get any better. When filtering for only console games, there are only two other franchises that appear in the top 100, NBA Ballers 
an NBA inside drive. But even in that top tier of NBA games, there still really wasn't or isn't any comparison between 2K and Live. The highest ranked NBA Live game was NBA Live 2004, which came in at 42. The highest rated 2K game was NBA 2K2, which came in at number one, tied with NBA 2K1, also at number one. 2K2 is probably the game I played the most growing. I have that intro song memorized. NBA 2K2 intro song. Yup, that's it right there, hold up. So I pull a tray up, switch. That's all day, you can't stop my J, it's NBA 2K2, let's play. So come on, bro. 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 That's fire. That's fire. But I, that's also why I don't rap. I'm not a rapper. But I'm not a rapper. I did used to make beats though. Actually, look, honestly, the the background music to this to this video that you're watching right now, is, that's your boy right there. I'm, I made that. That's me. Come on. Shout out to me. Anyway, ba ba back to the original point. So why did I go on a long tangent about video game ratings? Well, I think that ends up being the first reason why we see so few NBA games existing today. As technology advanced, it became harder and more expensive to continue to develop quality competitive sports games. It's estimated that it would cost roughly 60 to $80 million to develop a AAA game. And I think this is one reason why with every new generation of consoles, we've lost an NBA video game game franchise. I mentioned earlier that in the 2000s there were 67 console NBA games released that decade, but by the 2010s that number dwindled down to just 20. And this decade we have a total of just three, meaning we're on pace to have almost as many games released this decade as we did in the 70s when video games were first being made and all the games were named basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and while I do think the cost of development has a lot to do with this, I think there's something else that tends to get overlooked when thinking about these games and that's licensing. In fact, I think you can go so far as to claim that the cost of development is barely even a factor given how expensive licensing is. It was reported that in 2019, Take-Two Interactive, 2K's parent company, agreed to pay $1.1 billion, that's billion with a B. I love how people be saying that like, like damn bro, I heard you the first time, I know. <laughs> I know it's billion with a B. But yeah, it was reported that they paid $1.1 billion to the NBA and MBPA to get the rights to the the league and the players. You want LeBron in the game? Billion with a B. You want Giannis in the game? Billion with a B. You want Luka? Billion with a B. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Kobe? Billion with a B. Michael Jordan? Billion with a B. Shaq? Billion with a B. <laughs> don't don't I sound like the Halo dude? Like when you would get a kill? Overkill. Five minutes left. <laughs> I'm the only person that finds this funny. I know that. I know I'm the only person laughing right now. Um, but what can I do? That's how I be talking to my girl that doesn't exist. I'll be in her ear like five minutes left. <laughs> Four pumps left. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back to the topic. But on top of just the fact that the licenses are so expensive, billion with a B. But aside from the fact that the licenses are so expensive, what's more is that the license to the NBA comes with some pretty strict agreements. The league still needs to approve many aspects of the game, including content and pricing. As initially reported by Venture Beats' Jeff Grubb, EA has been planning to release NBA Live as a free-to-play title for some time now. The idea was that rather than making consumers pay 60 to 70 dollars for a new entry, the game would instead function like Fortnite or Call of Duty. Warzone, free games with constant updates and microtransactions to generate revenue. EA of course famously botched numerous releases of NBA Live in the 2010s, and although they cleaned it all up by the end of the decade, arguably even releasing a comparable product to 2K in NBA Live 19, after a decade of blunders, they have never been able to recover. So as a workaround, they figured out, eh, well if we make the game free, maybe we can get some market share back by effectively removing the barrier for entry. But due to competition concerns by the league, EA hasn't been allowed to release the game as to play. This is a product of the league having control over, among other things, the pricing in which the games can be sold at. And seeing how they're potentially worried about harming their lucrative relationship and partnership with 2K, this will likely never happen. That said, I do think there's another option here that can still allow a pseudo NBA game to be launched. See, while NBA Live will not be able to release an NBA simulation, they could maybe get away with releasing an updated version of The One, which was their online mode which combined elements of my park, my team, and my career, though it did have some pretty interesting and unique features. In that mode, each player could obviously create and customize their own avatar, but also their own team, 
their own court, jerseys, and bring it all together by competing with your team of collected players against others or by joining a party match. I know for me, when I played Live 19, which was some of the most fun I've ever had playing a video game, I was almost exclusively in this mode, and I think that would probably be true for most people that played the game. I don't think I actually played a single full, like regular NBA simulation. It was pretty much exclusively just in this mode. And the reason I bring this up is because by removing the NBA simulation aspect from the game, you actually don't need the license or the NBA's approval at all, effectively allowing you to release the game however you want, at whatever price you want, whenever you want. And if you want to add players in the game, you could maybe strike a deal with the Players Association exclusively to license the players. Or you can go another route and just license Legends with the Retired Players Association, which removes any potential involvement of Roblox with the NBA while still adding a level of authenticity. And to be honest, this might actually work in favor of Live given how their fan base most likely skews older, given how long it's been since the game has been popular. So this brings me to my prediction. I think EA won't release an NBA Live game anytime soon, but they might just release Live, removing any association with the NBA and making a free to play product that closely resembles the career and online mode of NBA Live. 19. So all right, what was the point of all this? Well, I think a lot of the reason why there are so few NBA games is because the barrier for entry has been raised so high. It's effectively impossible for most any new or independent publishers to enter the market. Even as development becomes more available over time through powerful gaming engines like Unity and more accessible as the lines between mobile and console gaming continue to blur, the licensing hurdle will be one that will be very difficult for any new companies to overcome. And unless the NBA is ready to hurt its relationship by allowing a free-to-play product like NBA Live to release on the market and cannibalize 2K's market share, I don't really see a scenario where we have another non-2K NBA game released, at least in the near future. But I do think a non-NBA basketball game could be a potential solution. We may never see NBA Live again, but that doesn't mean we won't ever see Live again. That sounded so much more fire in my head. <laughs> I was like, that's a bar. That's a bar. I gotta add that. It wasn't. It wasn't, I failed. Now, if you wanna learn more about the history of NBA Live, how it got to this point, and a bit more about some of the details we talked about today, click on this video here. It's a good one, I promise. And while you're doing all that clicking, click the like button, click the subscribe button. We're still building this up and any support we can get is greatly, greatly appreciated. And that should about do it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Love y'all, peace.